Hi, my name is Corey Kralke. I'm the president of the uh, Vermilion District Chamber of Commerce. And I'll be uh, introducing our candidate for today's uh, virtual um, election forum, uh, who's running for the town of uh, Vermilion uh, councillor position. And his name uh, is Kevin Martin. I'd just like to remind everyone that uh, all candidates will be asked the same questions in the same order with no prior knowledge of the questions. And these questions were submitted uh, to us. Uh, and just before we get started, just a final reminder to get out and vote in uh, the Town of Vermilion uh, Municipal Election, which is on October 18th. So Kevin, uh, as, a, as a candidate for, for Councillor, um, can you just introduce yourself briefly and why you decided to run? Sure. <clears throat> Thanks, Corey, for the introduction. Um, so my name is Kevin Martin. Uh, I live here in town. Um, I looked at uh, running at the by-election in 2020, but due to COVID, we uh, moved on to 21. Uh, reason for running, I, I guess, uh, is to support our town and, and growth in it. Um, you know, uh, politics is a tough thing to get into, but uh, I think it's worthwhile to, uh, to uh, better this community and uh, see what avenues we can take this, uh, our strong community forward. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, so just tell me a little bit more about yourself. How long you've lived in the community and how were you involved in the community of Vermillion? Okay, um, born and raised here just north of town at Clemald. Um, we uh, moved to town here about seven years ago. Um, I've always been, uh, since turning 18, uh, a volunteer fire member and uh, moving to Vermillion here, joined the volunteer fire department here in town. And then as well as uh, reaching out to Dion Pollard uh, and he uh, basically putting me towards the Parks and Rec and Culture Board, um, which in turn being part of that board, uh, you uh, meet a lot of new people and stuff like that. And then becoming board president here a couple of years back. Um, in doing so, that uh, incurred some subcommittees and other boards that you get part of. Uh, which was another one, which was the facility enhancement. Uh, was created to uh, look at our ice plant here in town. And uh, I think with uh, that project growing and moving it towards, uh, you know, other facilities in our town and, and reaching out to other groups to help them out in their needs uh, to better their uh, groups and efforts around town. So. But yeah, um, other than that, yeah, volunteer and help out where there is some need and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Okay, so first question, uh, being that expenses and the cost of living have increased as a future counselor, would you agree taxes are too high in Vermilion? And if so, would you propose to lower or at the very least hold them the same over the next few years? Yeah, taxes are always number one concern, no matter where you are. But yes, you are correct that um, depending where you down in your sets are being high in comparison to neighboring communities. Uh, I definitely think it's a hard look with uh, with that going forward to um, if at all possible lower taxes, but even with this hard times of keeping it status quo as we call it with no increases but due to unforeseen circumstances sometimes taxes do come into play okay thanks kevin um i caught most of that uh, it did freeze up a little bit so maybe i'm not sure if you want to just do a quick reset on your uh on your uh computer or maybe take your photo off for a bit Okay. I can always go plug in here too, Corey. I'll just reposition and plug in. Okay, I'll give it a second. Okay, you're good. I can see you. Here we go. I'm okay. A little bit brighter, I guess. Yep. Good, thank you. Yep. 
Uh, next question. Uh, Vermilion is a beautiful town and is flourishing so nicely. Uh, my concern is with the trailer park area. There are many young families that live in the area, but the roads are still gravel with no sidewalks. Uh, but yet the taxes are high. Mine are almost $1,700 a year. During winter months, there is no street cleaning that happens. And in the summer months, the roadways get wet and muddy from the substance the town uses and the rain. The residents know their taxes will increase if paving does happen, but it might be worth finding out if that is possible. Would you advocate for change in this area? It would be nice to see this area cleaned up where families can teach their kids how to ride a bike or learn to skateboard. Yes, I would definitely advocate for that area. Um, it does need some definite improvements. Um, the soil there is definitely a lot softer than other parts of town. And, you know, natural water is coming up at times, come springtime and stuff like that. But definitely if we could, you know, work with our uh, town and um, public works to look at what we can do to better that you know, that road, you know, we might have to do some dirt work first before going straight to pavement. And like you say, it is to try and keep the kids safe as well as ourselves getting around that area for sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question. And again, I'll just remind everyone that uh, these questions were submitted as the as a cross section of, uh, of questions from the public and uh, in, in no way do they reflect the chamber's opinion on any of this, but uh, why are we as taxpayers paying for an economic development department that attracts competitors, i.e. restaurants, uh, that put our pre-existing businesses out of business? What new businesses do you think would be a positive addition to our town? Yeah, it is hard to bring in new business without affecting current business. Um, there is a lot of times where, you know, say McDonald's, for instance, being our newest, latest and greatest this week, even that it will impact a lot of our restaurants and, you know, even our concessions at different functions, whether it be at school or even at the skating rinks. Um, new business to town, you know, that's not gonna affect anybody. I don't know if there's any way that a guy can say a new business won't affect somebody. Um, sporting, sporting goods would be a good one to have back in our community. Um, also a furniture store or something along those lines. But I know it's hard to be a startup business, but if we can work with the new business and get them up and running and draw business to them, just like we have for the downtown. Thank you. Okay, next question. Unless you are a World War II vet, COVID is by far the largest crisis of our lifetime. Such crisis requires steadfast and strong response to minimize damages. While Vermilion has been very lucky so far to avoid it, a, a major COVID catastrophe, the, the province as a whole has not. While other municipalities have actively responded to COVID crisis with strong safety measures and messaging, the town and town of Vermilion, uh, in my opinion, in contrast, has not been a strong promoter of COVID safety information or safety measures. Rather, the number of mental health posts on the town Facebook page are dozens of times more frequent than safety information for the pandemic. COVID is a crisis of community, which needs the leaders to lead the community, but that didn't happen. Would you have responded any differently to the COVID crisis had you been in town council? And specifically, what would you do differently now if elected? Um, it, it's always easier to um, look back on a pandemic from not being part of it and saying they've done everything wrong or right. Um, definitely information is number one to get out to the community. Um, you know, very good you know, say from the chamber, having their COVID page, as well as the town trying to get as much knowledge out as fast as you can. But a lot of times, by the time you get the first set of knowledge out, the government has changed it in a different form or not all the news, or I guess not news, but all the ideals from the government has come forward enough to give that confidence to our public. Um, would I have done things differently? I guess maybe, 
but uh you know until that situation lands on my shoulders it's hard to follow suit yeah okay what do you think of the current road cleaning services like snow plowing and street sweeping what would you do to improve it um to improve it would work with our public works department um, and you know it, it is tough to keep our streets clean uh, you know our priority is to the hospital for our safety and stuff like that um, my opinion i'd like to see the downtown or corridors to the schools open before business hours uh, nothing worse than trying to cross the street on a two and a half foot tall snow pile and not slip and fall trying to cross. I know it's hard to hide the snow, but it is also, we don't want the snow running into our businesses either. Um, street cleaning, well, that one's always tough. With wind in Alberta, the minute you go down one side, that blew it all back the other way. Um, I think street cleaning, you do one street today, you do the next street tomorrow, and it's all back again the third day. Um, I think if you do it in blocks and, and move it evenly across the town, sooner or later, we'll get all the streets clean. But I think just working with public works to try and schedule our snow cleaning a little bit differently, I think would go a long ways. Okay. Yep. Next question is an interesting one. If you received a $1 million grant to use for the town in any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Um, gee, that's a good one. I guess, uh, basically I would try and put it towards somewhere that would reach across evenly. You know, if it would be towards lowering taxes over the next few years, that might go a long way, um, to outsource it to one individual facility. I don't think that would be quite right. Um, you know, I think definitely trying to lower the taxes would be the, the best avenue for that um unless there's some expensive goal that is right on reach that is in emergent need i guess okay thank you uh, last question kevin what is the number one thing that you wish to accomplish in your four years as counselor my goal uh coming forward would be looking at affordable housing going forward for not only new homeowners but even uh, elderly um, going forward to the transition from either coming from the farm to town whether it be condo life or just moving into town um, the other one would be reassessing the vnet situation um, i think that's a big one i do believe that we need internet in our town but I don't know if the town needs to be the one bringing it forward. If it's better for businesses, all for it. Um, but I think it just need more knowledge on that topic. Um, but definitely the affordable housing um, development of where we can do that housing and the growth of our town, which direction do we go? Um, we're kind of bottlenecked with the, the Highway 16 and the river. So we're either going east or west and whether we can develop that way to make our town grow, we have to look that way. Okay. Well, and with that, that concludes our, uh, our interview of, uh, of Kevin Martin, who again is running for councillor of uh, Town of Vermilion. So thank you for participating in this, uh, this election forum um, interview. And uh, again, as a reminder to anyone watching, I. Uh, Make sure you have your say and uh, get out there and vote on October 18th. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Chamber. Due to a technical uh, glitch during our first recording, we've asked Councillor Candidate Kevin Martin to re-answer the question of, being that expenses and the cost of living have increased, as a future councillor, would you agree taxes are too high in Vermilion, and if so, how would you propose to lower, or at the very least, hold them the same over the next few years? Thank you. Um, so as the question, taxes always come into play, um, I think, during elections. 
it's hard to relate to tax increases or anything like that with who knows what's going on with the world. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely over the few years I've been in town, taxes always seem to get brought up of how they, how, how high are they in comparison to other towns. Uh, it's definitely a, a worthwhile look at, and if we can keep it the status quo for the next few years, it would be very, you know, rewarding if we could. Uh, that's one thing I will definitely take back to see if we can can hold that question forward. So.